Aloha everyone and welcome to Maui Craft Kitchen's very first episode on our new YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I think we have something like 60 subscribers already. This is the very first episode. I'm finally glad I can get it up and posted for you. Today we're going to be making pasta. But before we do, there's a couple things about this channel that I want to go over real quick. We're going to be making everything here from scratch. Everything. I try not to lose any products that are already pre-made. A lot of this stuff you're going to be making, it's going to tie into another video. Today we're going to make pasta, tomorrow we'll make something with the pasta. Sound good? But there's also a couple of things you're going to need to know about the way I do things. These are never going to appear on my channel. You might see a cameo once in a while, but for the most part, we don't do things in volume. These are volume measurements. We're going to be using these boys right here. A couple of scales. Get yourself a pair of kitchen scales. Why do you need two? Because this one is accurate for pounds and grams. This one here is better for less than a gram. Anything under 10 grams, I tend to use the little one. Anything with some weight to it, I'll use this one. It's a little less sensitive, I feel, than the jeweler scale. So get yourself a pair of scales. You know, it doesn't really matter which ones you use. As long as they've got some good reviews, um, you know, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get the best ones. Uh, I use them every day, so it's a little bit different. But for you at home, you know, most kitchen scales are great out there on the market. You can get one for a few dollars. They're not that expensive. The other tools we're going to be using today to make our pasta, this handy thing is a bench scraper. It, it does this. Yeah, you like that noise? That is its only job, really. It can divide things, cut things, but, uh, you know, high-tech equipment. We got this for about $5 at our uh, local department store. And lastly, this. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, a fork. I know, this is tough. Keep up with me here. We're going to be doing this in just a few minutes. If you like what you're seeing so far, click that like button down below. Subscribe. Give us more followers. The more followers, the better. All right, guys. Changing up views a little bit. Make this a little bit easier on you. So, how do you make pasta? We're going to start with 100 grams. Yeah, there's your first measurement. This is actually uh, 100 grams, but it's a blend. So this is a flour blend of semolina and bread flour. It's 75 grams bread flour, 25 grams semolina flour. I like this blend for most of my all-purpose pasta needs. Uh, occasionally I'll tweak it a little bit, change some flours up, you know, it kind of depends on, on what you're making and how you want the texture to be or the flavor to be. Um, every wheat is different. I do encourage you to experiment with different wheat blends, different ratios, but I find for everyday pasta, if I want to make some ravioli, something quick, this is my favorite go-to blend. So 75 grams of bread flour, and 25 grams semolina flour. And I'll put all these measurements in the uh, section down below the video there so you can you know, see it real easy. We're just gonna pour that out onto the cutting board here and we're gonna make a little well with our fork. Yep, first high-tech piece of equipment we got going on, our fork. You're just looking for these sidewalls to be you know, even, have some structure. There you go, just like when you were young, building stuff out of mud, but now you're building it out of flour. One large egg. That's about 50 to 55 grams if you're going by weight. I like to beat it ahead of time. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, you're better than that. So I like to beat the egg ahead of time. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. I don't have to do it here on the cutting board, you know. So then the only other ingredient that I use Salt. This is pink Himalayan salt. We have three grams of pink Himalayan salt here. I'm just going to spread that around. Just kind of get it evenly around in there. We're going to slowly pull in all of the flour from outside into the center until we make a nice thick egg paste. So just like this, you're going to slowly pull some of that in and just incorporate it, you know, a little bit at a time. Take your time here. We're in no rush. I mean, I, unless you're in a rush, in which case, don't take your time here. 
but for the most part right now I'm not in a rush so I'm just gonna take my time here and I'm gonna incorporate that flour make sure everything gets nice and incorporated as we mix so the Italians use a version of weighing the flour that they call a punch so if you take a fistful of flour you know a good just dip your hand right into the flour and pull that up you'll get about a hundred grams if you have an average size hand and so they call that a punch of flour so if you're ever without a scale you know just use roughly that I think it's it works out to be about three quarters of a cup roughly but yeah a punch of flour that's an Italian measurement I'm not sure if it's universal but Italy sure likes to use it so once we get a nice thick paste like this here we're gonna clean that fork off you want all that moisture that's being trapped in there all that egg so make sure you get every little bit out of there and then we're gonna switch to our second piece of equipment the bench scraper and we're just gonna throw that other flour on there just like this no rhyme or reason really kind of chop it in there get it incorporated we're fold it you know have some fun with it you just got to get the uh, get the flour and the egg to combine make everything nice and hydrated fold it over And then once you've just about got everything incorporated, I'll get rid of the bench scraper and just go by hand. Most of that flour is in there, so I can just kind of work it around with my hands a little bit easier than using the scraper. So we'll just keep working this just for a few minutes. Uh, a lot of pasta recipes say that you have to knead this for 10 minutes at a time. Um, you know, that's a lot of work. You can do that if you'd like, but I've got a, a much simpler approach on this. We're going to use time to our benefit. Um, the gluten that's in the flour will develop over time if it's just left to rest. And that's basically all we're looking to do when we need anything, is to develop the gluten in the flour. Uh, it gives the dough strength, gives it that nice texture that you're used to. So we're just going to knead this just for a, a second here, really, until it comes together. Uh, and forms kind of a, a clay-like substance. And then we're going to let that rest for about 10-15 minutes in some plastic wrap, just on the counter. And then we're going to come back and knead that just for another second, and it's going to be nice and supple. So right now we're left with this rough, shape it into a disc here, we're left with this kind of rough-looking ball, right? It's got all these cracks and divots all over it. Uh, in about 15 minutes, this gluten is going to relax, and it's going to be a lot easier to handle. So we'll be back in about 10-15 minutes, and we'll show you then. Aloha, guys. Welcome back. After a quick 15-minute rest, our dough is ready for its final knead before it rests for a long time. So we're just going to unwrap that ball. Again, it looks like this, a little crackly, a little crumbly. And we're just going to do that same thing. We're just going to push with our palm. We're just using this part of our palm here. And we're just going to push right into that dough and just kind of stretch it. Just push and fold that over. Turn it just a little bit. Same thing. Use that part of your palm. We're just going to push that part down. Fold that over into the center. Turn a little bit. Same thing. Push that down. And we're just going to go in a circular motion just a few times here. And because that gluten is nice and relaxed now, our dough ball is going to be much more smooth. Again, we're using time here to our benefit. We don't have to sit here and knead it for a long time. And we're just going to push that down into a little disc again. See, a lot more smooth. There's still some variances in there. There's still some, some stuff. If you don't really like that, you can sit here and play with it a little bit more. 
It'll smooth out completely, but trust me, it doesn't really matter. Because we're going to let this sit on the counter, again wrapped in plastic wrap, for at least two hours. So what I really like to do when I make this is I like to make it a day ahead of time. I like to leave it on the counter for anywhere from two to six hours. Uh, I know what you're saying, there's raw egg in there, but guess what? I don't personally care. If you care, put it in the fridge. So I like to leave this wrapped in plastic wrap on the counter for two to six hours, and then I'll pop it in the fridge and then uh, the next day I'll pull it out a couple of hours before I use it. It's a little easier to work with at room temperature. So I'll pull it out a couple of hours before I use it to let it come up to room temp. Today for this purpose though, we're just going to leave this sit on the counter just like this for a couple of hours, two hours. Um, and then we're going to come back to it and we're going to show you how to roll this. Probably a couple ways. I think I'll do one with a rolling pin and one with the pasta machine and the KitchenAid attachment uh, just to show you both ways. Um, anything's possible. You can use a bottle of wine to roll out pasta. Anything that you know will get you a, a cylinder so that you can roll the dough. It doesn't really, it's not rocket science. You don't even have to roll the dough really. There are other methods. But today we're going to show you two uh, simple ways at home to just get some regular pasta. All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, we just let our pasta sit on the counter for two hours. We are back and we're ready to roll. So we're going to do it two ways. We're going to show you probably what most of you are going to do is go out and get yourself either this attachment that I have for the KitchenAid, which is great. I love it. I'm not endorsed by anybody, let alone KitchenAid. Um, it's a fantastic attachment. There are little numbers here, whether you have the KitchenAid attachment or the regular hand crank attachment that just sits on your countertop. I believe it actually attaches to the countertop. Um, there are little numbers on the side here and that dictates how wide apart these wheels are. And these wheels are just gonna keep rolling and rolling and you're going to go cycle through these numbers and we'll go through this more in depth in a minute. Uh, you're gonna cycle through these numbers and they're gonna get thinner and thinner as we make the sheet of pasta and you're just gonna go down to the desired thickness. In my case, four is actually where I like it, which is about halfway through my wheel. I believe it goes to eight. Um, just to keep it a little thicker, I like a little more chew in my pasta. And again, this depends on what you're making. If you're making a ravioli or a tortellini, something with a couple of layers to it maybe, you might wanna go a little thinner because you're going to be crimping the pasta on itself. So you wanna make sure that your pasta is thin enough so that when you fold two layers over, it's still not that thick. Um, and we'll go over that in further episodes, but for today's purpose, we're going to use this KitchenAid attachment uh, for half the dough, and then for the other half, we're actually going to use this. I know, more high-tech equipment. Yeah, this is a piece of wood. Yeah, it's a uh, rolling pin. It's just a straight rolling pin. Um, we're going to just roll some out by hand and show you, you know, how long that takes, how to do it. Uh, it's really not that hard, trust me. So if this is all you have, you can still make pasta. So all I've done is I took the dough that we had resting on the counter and about five minutes before this video started, I cut it into two pieces. Huh? So I'm pretty sure you can handle that. So one egg pasta cut into two pieces. If this was a two egg pasta, I'd cut it into four pieces because I find that this size piece fits in the roller very well. It could be a little bit bigger, but for the most part, it does a good job. So I'm gonna take the other half, I'm gonna put it back in the plastic wrap. We don't want this to dry out. We want it to stay nice and supple. So I'm gonna take the KitchenAid attachment here. I'm going to put it right in there. There's a little knob that I'm spinning on this side to make sure that it's nice and secure. I'm going to put it on the thickest setting, which is usually one. I have some bread flour here. This could be any flour. It could be all purpose. It doesn't really matter. It's just so that the, the pasta doesn't stick too much. I'm just going to rub a little bit on my board here. Push down on this piece of dough and just try to flatten out so that it'll pass through the, the widest setting of my roller here. I'm just going to smush that just a little bit. Get some flour on it so that it glides through here nice and easy. Then I'm just going to turn the KitchenAid mixer on and you can see this is just the lowest speed that I have here on the KitchenAid mixer. 
and I'm gonna feed that through just until it takes. It'll it'll eventually start pulling it through. You don't have to really you know feed it through or anything. It'll pull it through on its own. Um, and then once you do that first pass through, you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. It looks like a weird prehistoric fish of some sort. So what we're gonna do with this, I'll show you up here so that it's a little bit easier, is we're just going to fold it and fold it so that we get a little squared off. And then I'm gonna push this down just like this on the cutting board so that it adheres back to itself, seals everything up, get a little more flour on it, make sure that it'll pass through the widest setting here. I'm gonna turn this back on and then I'm going to go this way with the, the open ends. See, here's the, the ends that we folded over. I'm going open ends, just back down that way. And then we're in, we'll shut the machine off. We'll end up with something that still looks a little weird. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna do that and that and just square it up. And then we're gonna push that back down, seal it up again make one sheet of pasta and this just squares it up and makes it you know pretty makes it look nice makes it easier to deal with see how it's already getting a little more square so then we're going to feed that again open ends down right into the machine just like that and now we have what resembles a sheet of pasta so i'm just going to put a little more flour don't go crazy you don't need a lot of flour here yet I like to run it through that first setting twice just to make sure that it's nice and uniform. And now what I'm going to do with the machine still running is I'm going to pull this knob out because you have to pull it out just a little bit and then go to the next setting, number two. And I'm going to put my sheet of pasta right through those rollers again. Nothing hard here. Again, I like to do twice, you know. Maybe it doesn't do anything. I don't know. I'm not sure. I just like to do it twice. Twice as better, twice as much. <laughs> it's gotta work. So we're gonna do the same thing. Switch to three, go a little thinner. In the sheet of pasta goes, out the other end. There are some tricks you can do to make this go a little faster. You can loop it onto itself like this and then continually roll it through. I'm not gonna teach you that today because this is a beginning class. We're going to go to four, roll that through there, steam rolling, rolling. I'm not going to sing any songs because that would, I mean, I'm singing songs in my head, don't get me wrong. Don't forget to have fun when you make this. That is 90% of it. If you don't have fun when you make this, the pasta is going to know and you're not going to have good pasta. All right, so here we go, back in the machine. For the second time, rolling through four. If you notice it going to one side, just try to gently, you know, core sit back the other way. It'll be fine. It'll go back. It's not the end of the world. Don't be frustrated. We just made pasta. You see how easy that is? Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? So now if I'm going to run this through the cutter that also comes with KitchenAid, I like to let this dry a little bit. Uh, it makes it a little easier to cut. So maybe five, 10 minutes max. You don't want it to dry out too much because it'll crumble. If I was going to cut this by hand, which I will show you momentarily, I will just roll it up just simply like this. And then cut this way. So now what we have is the fettuccine attachment. This will cut I'd say there are probably about a quarter inch wide strips of the pasta. All you have to do is plug it in the same spot after you've let your pasta dry for a few minutes. Run a little more flour on it just so it passes through the rollers nice and easy. Then we're going to turn the machine on again and same as before we're just going to run it right through these. We're going to catch it as it comes out. See that? Easy. And what you're left with is beautiful pasta. Now we take that pasta and we're just going to give it a light flouring. 
just so the noodles don't stick together. Pick it up just like this. Got the two sides coming down just like that and just give it a little twist. And that's gonna give you a nice little nest of pasta. Now we can let that nest of pasta dry or we can pop it in the freezer, keep it fresh for I'd say easy two weeks. As long as it's nice and sealed or you can cook it right away. And just like that, we have switched views and we're getting ready to use the rolling pin. All right, I am excited. We're gonna lay a little flour down, just like that. Flatten this guy out by hand here. Take our rolling pin or our bottle of wine or our can of spray paint, maybe? Not recommended, don't, don't go with the last one. And roll, spin. Roll, spin, roll, I mean, you get the idea, right? So I'm going to speed this up a little bit while I do this. No, you will want to flip it every once in a while. A little flour, a little flour on the board, flip it. Back to rolling. When your pastas reach the desired thickness, I like about one to two millimeters, you're done. It's that easy. To hand cut, like I promised you we would, we're going to flour this a little bit so it doesn't stick on itself. We're going to roll it up. Keeps flouring. Just using the residual flour that's on the board. We're going to take our kitchen knife. Ooh, finally, something sharp. If you want to, you can square off the edges. Professionals do this to make their pasta look pretty. If I'm doing home cooking, I don't do this, but for sake of the video, we'll show you. Now you can cut strips as thick or as thin as you would like. If you'd like the fettuccine that we did earlier with the machine, you just cut fettuccine size just like this. Make sure you're pushing forward with the knife as you press down. You don't want to pinch the pasta, you want to slice through the pasta. And then we undo the roll and we're left with fettuccine. If you want to do thick pappardelle, I think that's how you pronounce it, my Italian is not perfect. Cut wider strips. Now we have fancy pasta, just like that. If you want really, really small angel hair type pasta, you cut really, really small angel hair type pasta. Again, remember to slice. As thin as you can get it. It's all up to you, you're the chef here. You can make all these different pastas. If you want to leave it thick, you can cut the middle section out, simply push together the center, and get little bow ties. That's it, you made pasta. Your cooking time's gonna vary slightly depending on how thick you rolled your pasta. But as with anything, cook it until you like it. I can't begin to thank you all for your support. It's overwhelming. Be sure to tell your friends about Maui Craft Kitchen's new cooking channel so they can subscribe to and get all of our latest content. Many mahalos and much aloha, guys.